Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to my desktop. That is what this sort of looks like. Um, welcome to the very first episode of what we're calling for now, until we change the name, Local Chat, which is a subpixel podcast, sort of where we can talk about games we've been playing, the news, and maybe learn a thing or two. Joining me today is a man who is always by my side. He's a friend. He's a foe. He's a lover. Ian Gibson, how are you? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Um, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for having me. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> and also joining us uh, from the void for a split second there is uh, my coworker, also lover and friend. Uh, uh, for the first time since the certification of the electoral votes by Congress, it's one Chris Elliott. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they know me before. It's Thursday. You know what that means. Um. No pants. <laughs> can I just can I just say real quick? We are killing this intro right here. So if this we could just take it from the top, to a podcast but, I've ever heard. But this time we'll hit the record button and it'll be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, folks, uh, I uh, this is a, a somewhat long time coming. Uh, I've been wanting to do a, <laughs> just like me. Uh, I've been wanting to do a podcast for a while, um, and so we kind of did it. Uh, I I. Ian, it was six o'clock today, and I thought to myself, that's weird, no social post. And then I realized <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one doing the stream. So I quickly made a I logo. Think... Um, and oh, uh, I quickly. I think the best part is we've been preparing basically all week for this. <laughs> so it was like at the top, at the top and the front, however more to say it of your mind, and you still miss the social media. That's the funny part. And I, I didn't have a thumbnail. I made this crappy logo thing today it's which good. actually it's, it's, good. Good. Said, it's not bad three different times at work today i gotta make a stream layout <laughs> the layout works the layout works, yeah. the layout works. Yeah. i like my layout um yeah this uh, this is fun i listen I, I have a i have a whole thing to watch uh, if you're watching the stream now i i can do this and go now we're going to talk about what we've been playing uh I made mean, this what little thing called values. What You Playing. Uh, oh. Ian, uh, what have you been playing? Tell me. Um, Speak to me. I've been playing two games. Uh, one game is called Call of Duty colon Black Ops space Cold War. Yes, I did have to look that punctuation up because <laughs> Call of Duty, like, production chronology as well as naming conventions is almost as bad as Marvel's spider hyphen man it's it's bad the um, spider man <laughs> i okay look i'm just gonna say it real quick there's two things i'm gonna do this here number one is i'm gonna make y'all y a apostrophe l l canon it is no. gonna be the new official spelling the other thing is i'm going to officially destroy the hyphen in spider-man because it doesn't belong there it's so stupid Anyways, um, hold on, hold on, hold on. You spell you spell y'all y a apostrophe yeah. l l. <laughs> and we bad. pointed it out. It and looks... Ian goes, "Oh yeah, I do spell it wrong." Well, I'm gonna keep doing that. <laughs> it looks so much better that way. Uh, no, it doesn't. Someone from, as someone unfortunately from the south, you disgust me. <laughs> it's it looks better that way. Anyways, um, all right. So I've been playing Call of Duty, and I'm just gonna say, uh, the last Call of Duty that I played was. The last Call of Duty that I played, like the campaign through and I took seriously, was Modern Warfare 2. I wasn't a huge Modern Warfare 2 fan. Basically, everything before that I thought was was decent to great. Um, that's Modern Warfare 2 is basically where I fell off the series. And I came back to Black Ops Cold War for like basically two reasons. Number one is it's been getting some decent reviews, and people say it looks fantastic on next-gen consoles. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have next-gen consoles. And number two, because people said it has good use of the dual sense adaptive controllers on the playstation 5 if ah. basically the controllers that adjust your tension dynamically so they can make it hard to press the trigger or soft and they can do it throughout the throw so you can have it soft and then hard um so so what basically yes it was so i don't loud. know why he's screaming in the background so basically i bought the game because it was on sale I want to play it on my ps5 and i wanted like i, I like the dual the use of the dual sense in astro's playroom and i was like Give it to me. It's been a while. I played some Warzone. I kind of liked Warzone, so just give it to me. Give me this game. Let's see what it is. And guys, Call of Duty 
still bad. Still, still bad. bad? <laughs> uh, it's Aww. like it it looks it looks good. It looks okay, but the problem is there's literally an option called ray tracing and you turn it on or off and it doesn't do anything. <laughs> And like, like I know enough about ray tracing that I was like finding like reflections and like, like a lamp, like a, like a pole in front of a lamp and like looking at the shadow and turning the ray tracing on and off. And it changes the shadows slightly, but it is not actually enabling ray tracing. Or if it is, it's just like the most BS ray tracing anyways. Um, it does have Robert Redford in it, <gasps> which is hilarious. That's great. It's not actually Robert Redford. It's just a character that looks exactly like Robert Redford. How's the uh, has that creepily modeled uh, ghost Reagan? It's actually pretty good Reagan. It the mouth is a little off, but honestly, it's right about the same quality as Disney's Star Wars. Oh, uh, wow. keeps doing with their with their characters. That's impressive. Uh, yeah, you it's cocaine? pretty good. Yeah, does he uh, does he use they them pronouns and no. then tell you to commit war crimes? <laughs> no, he does tell you to commit war crimes. He, wait. Oh, actually, I think, I think this is in one of the trailers. He's like, there's this line where they're like, Mr. President, that's illegal. And he, he goes, do you know what these guys do? They do illegal things. And he goes, who do you think ordered them to do that? <laughs> it's like, ah, ah. Okay, at least he's fair enough. At, yeah, at, least, at least they're not trying to act like it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but um, I haven't played any of the Black Ops games, but... This one's kind of weird because they, they keep trying to be like, we're a CIA, like team of three or four on site covert operatives. And we're going to do this covert operative stuff. So like the first mission in the game has you in Amsterdam in like the early 80s. It's like a couple months after the uh, Iranian uh, hostage situation, which if you recall, is basically the Iranians uh, kidnapped about, uh, several dozen Americans and held them hostage. I think some of them hostage for up to two years. But anyways, you're in Amsterdam. And you're with Robert Redford and Robert Redford's like, I got a tip. I know there's two guys connected to the, the hostage situation and they're here in Amsterdam. And you're like, okay. So you like walk out of this bar and he like meets up with the head of police and he like pays him off. So the head of police just like, like literally locks down the streets and is like streets closed and like all the police disappear and all the civilians disappear. And then you walk up to this house and you like, it's like a house in the middle of Amsterdam, you know, this Amsterdam neighborhood. And you see through the back window, you see like, four guys at a kitchen table and he goes there's one of them and then he goes okay bell kick it off and then he hands you a he hands you a submachine gun and you're just <laughs> like okay and you just light up the house right Very and then all, weapon, the all, gun. <laughs> all of a sudden like literally for the next 15 minutes is just this like enormous running gunfight through Amsterdam. Like as soon as you shoot the first guy, all of a sudden just like dozens and dozens of Iranian terrorists pop out of this Amsterdam house. <laughs> and he literally goes, looks like there's a whole cell here. And it's like, yeah, no, no bleep, buddy. Come on. There's like, <laughs> there's like 50, 60 terrorists in the middle of Amsterdam. And we're all just like shooting and throwing oh. grenades at each other. And I'm like, this is the largest, most well-armed terrorist cell in the history of mankind. What the hell's going I, on? I know. And then they're just like done. And they're like, great job, CIA team. And it's like, <laughs> high fives all around. You, it's, it's crazy because they do like the, there's a little, little bit of a, I don't want to call it a hub world, but they keep doing like between mission sequences. You could talk to your teammates. Like one of them is like looking stuff up on a computer and you're in like a safe house and they have a mission board and it's literally a big pegboard and they have all this stuff on it. And you can look at previous missions really and be you like, I'm going to say the dream board. No. <laughs> and, and you can look at previous Hot missions and be like, sh show me pictures of evidence. And they'll like show pictures and they'll be like, this is so-and-so and like literally like a three paragraph story description or be like, this is a redacted piece of Intel that tells you this, this, and this. Like, it's so easy to get into this as this is a CIA game from the eighties. And it's like, heck yes. And then every single mission is just like cinematic popcorn junk with just endless explosions and ridiculous things. Like you go to, they had this really cool sequence. You go to KGB headquarters and you play as a Soviet uh, spy uh, it's basically this colonel who is actually working with the CIA and there's like a mini hitman level where they're like, you Ooh. need to get this key card. You can go kill this guy. You can go poison this guy. You can go bribe this guy. And so you're like wandering around dealing with security guards, doing all that. And it's great. And they're like, great. You have this key card. Now let in your teammates and you let in the teammates and they come in with machine guns and just like destroy the entire KGB headquarters. And it's like, 
what in this like semi-scripted sequence it's i'm sorry this game is just like there's so if much that, if that was an option why didn't we do it in the first place <laughs> it's just like there's so much potential we'll just like, nuke them where the, the game looks beautiful <laughs> they're trying new things and just to say it because i mentioned it earlier the dual sense controller with the guns doesn't feel great they didn't implement it properly but it's it's okay i oh, guess that's a shame and it's just it's just like i want to go back to call of duty call of duty used to be so so good yeah. and it's not anymore and I see them trying to change things up and they're just still stuck in their roots. And it's like, Argh! anyways, I play Call of Duty. Nice. Oh, I'm very happy for you. Mm -hmm. uh, any, anything else you're playing? Yeah, um, I'll just bring it up because I can't stop bringing it up. I've been playing iRacing because I have about two weeks until my next 24 hour <gasps> team endurance race. Fun. And so I'm basically doing an hours. Yes. Well, it's not uh, me. He doesn't have to do the 24 hours. Oh, I do, okay, about, okay. I do about six hours of it. Um, so still not it's, amazing. Yeah, it's still a lot. We basically do three two hour segments. So and we do a smart thing where it's like I'm the U.S. team member. And then there's usually like one or two European team members. So we're so they can take the night shift because it's their morning. And then I take their night shift, which is basically the beginning of the race. Anyways. So I've been playing a lot of that. I got a, a, a new load cell brake pedal for my sim rig, which is weird oh. because I now have to drive differently. It's basically more realistic to a car. So I have to like retrain my brain where I'm like, I'm playing a video game, but now I have to drive it like it's a car, if that makes any sense. That is so I'm weird. doing like doing like an hour of racing every day. It's like my practice session. I'm getting better at it. And it's like it's like if I was if I wasn't lazy, it's like I'm running a marathon in two weeks, so I have to run a 5K every day. And it's it's cool. weird little, like, video game exercise routine I have. Hmm. Um, that's yeah, it? that's pretty much it. I may start Darkest Ian, Dungeon. Ian's out here no. pra like, like he's oh. practicing for Evo. I've been, <laughs> I've been sitting on Darkest Dungeon. I bought it Great a game. while back on GOG Terrible with, like, lost. all of the, uh, all of the DLC. Oh, mm -hmm. I've been like that in Sunless Sea. I've been sitting on Sunless Sea. I've talked about this before. It, like it's, I've talked about it to you before. It's it is one of my favorite narrative games of all time. It is amazingly written. Yeah. Oh, I'll just try that because I, I do like well-written it. games. But Darkest Dungeon was gorgeous. It was, it was free on Epic over the holidays. Yeah. I have a friend who keeps talking about it. Like that's basically the, the only game he's playing right now. So I'm like, okay, maybe I'll give it a shot. You know what? It's a really like, good game. Once I'm done with uh, Call of Duty colon Black Ops space Cold War, oh uh, <laughs> now sp Call of Duty space, space Cold War <laughs> reminds me. Of, I should probably. I heard space Infinite Warfare War. was good. Did you Did guys you... ever play Infinite Warfare? Uh, that was the one with the no. Exocel rigs, right? I played a little bit of space. it at a uh, at a friend's house. I recall it being you know pretty pretty competently made, but I, mean, I was like it's still a Call of Duty game. Do you yeah. think they can make a Call of Duty Cold War Star Wars? Not about Star Wars, but about the Reagan era Star Wars. Ooh, that's kind of that's what this is. But yes, but just take the name. Do you think they'd win? No, no, they would not. I feel like I feel like there's a way you could get away with it. I feel like <sighs> if the U.S. government gave you the thumbs up, you can get away with it. I feel like if it was a maybe. documentary about the Reagan program, you could maybe call it Star Wars. Video yeah, I can see that. that. That's a playable documentary. <sighs> Yeah, oh, that's crazy. Um, okay. Oh, well, wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh. I just realized though, Reagan Star Wars came after Star Wars. Yes, Star Wars. And I would, I, I, I'm not certain, but I'm, I feel like it came from Star Wars, the franchise. So Reagan is, you uh, can't really say it's different. Yeah, maybe it did. That's not, yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on, Chris. Uh, what have what have Thank you been you. up to? Uh, Thank you. Been Ian. playing a lot of. Hades because it's a game that I just haven't stopped yeah. playing since it came out basically uh, you know I beat it during Rona times um, and then you, you gotta I mean I, this is a very <laughs> minor spoiler you gotta beat it 10 times to get the sure ending um, Heck, you 11? 10 or 11 uh, and uh, I've just been slowly chipping away at that not too seriously sometimes I'll just do like one or two runs die and be like eh I'm, I'm done for the day great game uh, 
something uh fridge and i've said on the other podcast is a uh, man this game is profoundly horny <laughs> just, it is all the art all the dialogue it's great mm-hmm. i love it super giant games is just like hey you guys want a really gorgeous well-written awesome music great roguelike cool it's also gonna be horny you gotta deal with that <laughs> you gotta deal with you gotta I, live in our world i own it i've it's been just game. sitting on it it's, i mean it's i, I wouldn't a lot of people have said, like said like uh, like Russ Frederick said, this perfected the roguelike uh, concept. I don't agree with that. Um, I think it's a very, very, very well-made roguelike. Uh, there's some things I don't like about it, but overall, like, I mean, it's it's bar none one of the best roguelikes to ever come out. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I feel like for me, it's a lot like Apex Legends, where Apex Legends came along, Battle Royale was already it had its heyday, etc., and Apex Legends basically said, "We're not going to make the same thing. We're going to actually." you know, evolve this genre and add things that it needs and add in some interesting mechanics, et cetera. And it feels like Hades really does that by having, you know, stories that progress run to run to run, a lot of mechanics that mm-hmm. that uh, evolve and level up between runs, et cetera, as opposed to the generic, like, here's your run, good luck. Oh, sorry, here's yeah. your run, good luck. You know, so I, it's, Will, you would definitely love it. It's a great game. Yeah, it, and it was good to see get it a lot of the award nomination and awards for 2020 yeah, to, oh, yeah i mean although i i will say i don't think super giant games is a is a indie dev anymore so like them winning best indie title is kind of like eh. yeah, yeah that's true yeah i could see that uh what else anything else uh yeah i've been playing uh minoria which uh if you're into uh metroidvanias you probably know what that is but if you're not uh so this is by the same team that made momodora which is l- like when people talk about like modern Castle of Metroidvanias, they pretty much only talk about uh, Hollow Knight and Momodora and maybe sometimes Shovel Knight, which is kind of eh, a weird sub, sub subgenre. Uh, but Minoria is a uh, it's a spectacle fighter Metroidvania, <laughs> which is rad. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's a lot of like like dodge rolling and like timed parries Ooh. and like air combos. Mm. Uh, but it's also a Metroidvania. Uh, it's very well done. Music is good. Art style's kind of weird, but it's it's it still looks good it's like a mix of pixel art and not pixel art uh which is kind of whatever but uh yeah i mean overall the game is really good the boss fights so far are very like interesting and uh engaging and also like level design is just good you because i had like super metroid was so long ago i forget how good just a big map with interconnecting things that over that unlock over time you've double back and do stuff is like it's it's so easy for it to be bloated and annoying. Like, oh, I don't want to go mm-hmm. back over there. But when it's done well, like I mean, Hollow Knight's a perfect example of this. Um, a game that has too much free content. Um, it's, <laughs> it's just like, uh, oh yeah, that's actually like I'm excited to have to trek back through that because I have all my new stuff. Yeah. Metrovania is I, I I dropped off them for a long time, but God, they're satisfying. Uh, another thing I was gonna talk about is uh, one step from Eden, which uh, I talked about how I think uh, Hades is an amazing roguelike but i have problems with it i have no problems one step from eden it is a perfect roguelike it is amazing uh if you were ever into the uh, Mega Man battle network franchise uh play this just i, I thought that's it you will you will have a good time it is a it's such a well-made game i wish i had a story but man the from run to run it is so amazingly done what's the um what's the combat mechanic because i'm looking at some screenshots and it looks like it's like grid based what what what's like what's so, the gameplay like so you, you never play mega man battle network i'm assuming no um, wow. so that's a it's it's a weird it's a weird style of combat so it, it's a, basically like you build a deck of abilities cards mm-hmm. um and then you will automatically draw them into like your hand which is just in in once every minute it's two uh two cards you can have at once um and uh you could just get to use those and there's all kinds of different ones so like for, for example there is glitter or, or sorry glimmer ones which are like i will shoot a laser beam or like uh slash which is i will use a sword um mm-hmm. and there's uh it, it goes all the categories and in those categories they have say 20 cards each and you have to like basically mix and match and build yourself a deck that you can then uh fight through so you have like a basic attack which is just like you know shoot gun but then you get to expend your resource mana to uh you know you to use your card to use the big sword slash or the huck grenade or whatever it is and then you progress and every time you beat every time you beat a thing you get a reward which can either be an item which is something that affects your own like hey you get 50 more hp or something that's like hey you get this new card or whatever the heck yeah it's, it's very similar to slay the spire in that way 
Yeah, Slay the Spire, man. Oh, it's another fantastic. Oh, hey, you know what? Uh, Slay the Spire, they're coming out with a board game version of that. Which kind oh, of I saw that today, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not... They they announced it's happening, and the Kickstarter is going to happen at some point in the future. So I am... I, I think I'm going to take a look at the Kickstarter, but I'm tempted to buy it, because that game is I feel like fantastic. that game could adapt well to a, uh, to a board game. Yeah, I've never played definitely. it. It's a really, it's a really well made roguelike. It has some problems with particularly like how it scales difficulty. Very similar to Dark Tony we talked yeah. about earlier. But uh, other than that, it's pretty good. And the last thing I've been playing is fucking League of Legends. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Well, Let's go talk about it. I, uh, I, got, know, I have the other an, day, I have, an, I have an addiction. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> the other day, Maggie uh, went to hang out with her cousin, and then she came back, and she was like, "I think I want to play League of Legends again." And I was like, why? And she goes, because all the time I was there, he was just playing it while we were talking. I think I want to play it. And then she <laughs> asked me if I wanted to play it with her. And I was like, I was like, does it have last hit? And she goes, what do you mean? I was like, where only the person who scores the last hit on an enemy gets like the XP and the gold. And she was like, I think so. And I was like, then I don't want to play it because it's trash. <laughs> gold, gold, yes, XP now. But, but Ian, trash. you're still correct. Yeah. You're still correct in not wanting to play League of Legends. I hate that mechanic so much. Oh God, I I just I, that's what stopped me playing uh, Dota Two was I was playing it for a couple days and I was like getting into it and then I had a match where an enemy my teammate was trying to jungle something and they were about to die and I came in and I landed two hits on the enemy to help him out and they blew up at me they were like you stole my gold XP and I was like oh sorry but I I was helping you and they're like how dare you how dare you and I'm like. <laughs> The game is like actively discouraging me from helping my teammate because I may accidentally steal from them, even though we're on the same team. And then I went and played Heroes of the Storm for like two weeks because that doesn't well, have that, last hit, which makes that's it better. More of your teammate being a jackass because he still gets something even in Dota, but whatever. Yeah, um, yeah. It was one of those. You should go play Smite, like, Ian. Everyone loves Smite. <laughs> that, that very well managed yeah. and well run game, Smite. I just got Love so Smite. I just got so pissed where I was like, my intentions were perfectly good, but the game mechanics yeah. were like in that instance, actively discouraging teamwork. And I was like, that's yeah. trash. That's trash. Anyways. Um, great. Well, uh, anything else, Chris? No, Willie, what have you been playing? Oh, what play? have I been playing, you ask me? I have been playing RimWorld. Transitions. <laughs> Too much RimWorld. <laughs> I love things. I, three things I love in life. RimWorld, Rim... No. I love RimWorld. <laughs> Can it's I ask so... you a question? You've been playing this for like a couple of weeks, so I just want to know, like, I, I kind of know what type of game this is. So I want to know where you are. Is it that you're on like the second or third run where you're like, oh, I think I can do it better this time? Are you trying to feel like you're, you're really good at the game and so now you're trying to do a perfect run? Or are you at that level where you're like, I want to do a crazy run. I want to do this crazy thing. I want to do this crazy, this crazy thing. Um, <clears throat> it's. I like that you brought that up because that's the one thing I was going to bring up. This is the first game I've ever played where I am playing it enough where I'm like, oh, I should do like a run where I'm not allowed to use my left, not my left hand, but like, oh, I should do a run where I, my eyes are closed the whole time. Or I should play the entire <laughs> game upside down. But like, I want to be like, oh, I should do a whole run in like the desert. And like, so that's where my holiday video came from. It's like, oh, I should do... A hol I should do a run where I'm in f as far north as possible, starting out with a Santa Claus character and just see what happens. Um, yeah. So that's what I did for that. Um, so I'm playing, I'm still playing my second ever base. Um, okay. I'm eight or nine years in and I'm just playing that because it's fun. And then uh, I'm, I'm also playing the one I'm recording for future episodes, the other stuff. And then I have like ideas in my brain for adding more stuff and then there's a whole slew of incredible mods that are made for this game so like there's a whole mod pack where you build your own ship and then you can fly that ship up and fly to other planets or you can have a whole space Ooh. station or there's uh these vanilla expanded mods where they add more animals or more characters there's mobs uh, there's a couple mods i'm thinking of adding first off which make the ai a little bit better so your a character might bring granite blocks to the wall that's about to be built, even though they're not, if it's on their way to do mm -hmm. something else. Um, so it's oh, like okay. smarter AI in that sort of way. But other than that, it's just like the, the emergent storytelling is really good. Um, if uh, it looks similar to Dwarf Fortress, you, but it's, it's more apparent here because you have better logs and better UI. I think that's the one thing that sets it apart from Dwarf Fortress is it's probably not as complex or amazing or incredible, but it just has good UI. 
Uh, it's not even the best mm-hmm. UI, but it's just more than what Dwarf Fortress is, which uh, is a huge hurdle for a lot of people. Um, so yeah. I think that kind of brings out the more fun. Um, and then it has all these storyteller options with like there's three different types of storytellers uh, and they do things in different ways. And then you can choose the quote unquote difficulty of that storyteller um, who kind of mm-hmm. gives you stuff. So that's kind of what I'm enjoying about it is just like running my base day to day. Uh, and then uh, it's funny because the one I'm running, the long term one, like I save scum all the time, like a personal die. I'll be like, oh, I don't want to do, I don't want that to happen. So I'll go back versus yeah. the Arctic one is on permadeath. So things just happen. And I think it's way more enjoyable that way. But I will continue yeah. to save scum the other thing. But it's just <laughs> the things like uh, not to spoil too much, but like they started starving in the Arctic. And then this lady's fiance died she immediately started eating him. <laughs> like, immediately. <laughs> like, well, no hesitation. Like societal things can evolve in that game. Oh, so, wow. it's so It's so, like, goofy, but also super yeah. interesting. The best description of the game I, I have heard uh, is, RimWorld is Dwarf Fortress for people that don't hate video games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yes, I have mm. been <laughs> enjoying RimWorld. I've also been playing... Uh, I played... Call of the Sea, uh, which was kind of shown off for some Microsoft stuff. It's on the Series XS, it's, or it's XS Enhanced, I believe. Um, it, this game doesn't look good. Um, it's like, Is this the exploration game? Which one's this? Yeah, it's like an exploration game, walking simulator with some puzzles. Um, it's, it's the aesthetic. I, it's one of my favorite aesthetics in any video games or media, which is like 1930s adventure and like steamships yeah. and that sort mm-hmm. of stuff. I love that aesthetic you'll you'll pull me in anything with that um i kind of played to completion because it was it was fun the story was a little weird the only big issue i ha- oh sorry for the graphics it just seems like it wants to have hdr on but it never switched my tv over to hdr mode oh. um so like Man. everything's super bright and blown out and to the point where like i don't have the most expensive tv in the world it's a tcl but i could you know when sometimes when the TV gets dark or really bright, you can see those lines of where, like, the, the LEDs are? Or, like, the dark yes. pattern? So I could see that, like, looking around at the sand and stuff. And it was, like, Weird. super distracting. And I was like, is my TV broken? Um, yeah. So that was annoying that's, that's, on that front. Like they, it sounds like they were like, we could implement HDR or we could just <laughs> bloom and saturate everything. Yeah, so I was kind of disappointed because it, it looked like it was going to be a good-looking game. Um so, uh, but the puzzles are my main issue because a lot of the puzzles, they give you more information than you need to finish the puzzle. So you think the puzzle is more complex than it is. Oh, yeah. And that frustrated me because I had to look up answers on like two biggish puzzles and the answers were the first thing you would think they are, not like the the more deeper down the rabbit hole thing. And I get you want to add lore and stuff. But it was just like, no. And then there are a couple puzzles that were just arbitrary for being arbitrary. They're like, yeah, I guess you could just hit buttons for a bit. And I was like, oh, that's annoying. What's a good major puzzle game? Uh, The Witness. I don't like like those dumb slide puzzles. Yeah, but it's a great puzzle game. The meter puzzles. They teach you. It's it's a master class in progression of... In rolling out information. Yeah, teaching you how to do things. Um... So yeah, it's it's okay. It was okay game. It was like eight hours. I might hop back in and get a couple more achievements uh, because they do the great thing where you can load the chapters and you have all your progress. So I'm like, oh, I'm like I'm that. missing two notes in chapter four. So if I go to chapter four, I have all the chapter notes, and then I'm just picking up the f- chapter four notes. Oh, uh, they do a pretty nice. good way. There's a, multiple endings, which was kind of cool. Um, it's just like the story. I, not because it wasn't a good story, but I think it got too generic. And I, it was, but it was also interesting. I don't know. Uh, and then the only other game I have been playing uh, is Legends of Grimrock 2. Uh, mm-hmm. I beat Grimrock 1 last year. It's a fantastic game. If you've never played it, I highly recommend it. I walked um, into the office on Tuesday and Will, like within five minutes, like, oh, I have a new soundtrack for us. And he starts playing Grimrock soundtrack. <laughs> the main theme to, I would play it now if we wouldn't get taken down, probably. 
The main <laughs> theme to Legends of Grimrock 2 is really good and is... It's I'm not saying it's wasted, right but yes, it is better than it has any right to be and it needs to be heard. Um, it needs to be... It's, it's very good. Um, I don't know if I'm going to stick with this. I had, apparently, I had 15 hours in this game um, and I'm coming back to it and I'm starting over and now I'm starting to remember things. Grimrock 1 is just so good, but I, I, I don't know about Grimrock 2. I might stick with it. I might not. Um, other important... Actually, no. I won't get to that yet. That, folks, uh, is what we have been playing. Uh, now we are moving on to what I like to call the news. First order of business before we do anything, Ian. Guess what uh -huh. I bought today? You bought a PlayStation 5. They had a big drop, didn't they? I did buy a PlayStation 5. I missed the Best Buy drop. And then mm -hmm. Wario64 posted bundles from GameStop. And I clicked on it. And I GameStop's great because when you hit F5, it doesn't move the Add to Cart button. So you can just spam it. Uh, so I did that a bunch. And then it wasn't working. I was like, okay, I'm not going to get a PS5. Then I'm like, oh, my ad block is on. Maybe that's affecting it. Turn the ad block off. Hit pre-order. Captcha pops. Hit the captcha. Adds to my cart. I just check out. It was like I was buying something, anything in the world. Like, yeah. It was so easy. It was like nothing. It was like butter. Um, it was expensive um, because it was Wait, a bundle. Did you? Oh God! But and their bundle. Wait, how much? What was in no, the no? No, it's it's MSRP. It's it's. There's no markup. I know it's MSRP, but how much did they? How much extra did you get? Not so. Demon Souls was already gonna buy. Miles already Morales right. was already gonna buy. Already extra gonna buy. controller already gonna buy. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. well for Karen, and then uh, twenty dollar. I think it's twenty dollar gift card. Twenty five. Twenty five. So not yeah. bad. So that's pretty good bundle. That's yeah. Pretty good bundle. Uh, it um, wasn't the it, worst. It just means that. Just mental note to myself, I don't need to buy Demon's Souls, and I don't need to buy Miles Morales now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're welcome. Um, so it's a pre-order, but I'm not sure if it's a pre-order. So they gave me January 29th as the day when it releases. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's just when they're getting their next shipment in or when they think they're getting their next shipment in. So anyways. So that's, yeah, that's probably because when I did my Walmart PS5, it was a pre-order they were like you're not going to get it till january 9th and i ended up getting it like what was it like december 28th or 29th something like that so gotcha. so basically they they know a shipment's coming they know how much is in that shipment and you're you're buying before they've received the shipment okay. oh, that worked. um so yeah I'm, I'm excited to get that and i'm excited i put minimal effort into trying to get it so yeah it was good. like I, I wasn't stressing out and now i've now i've paid money um anyways Back to the serious news. Uh, first up on the news, guys, pre-orders are, are, are live for th 3D Crunch Doritos. I don't know why I started so many times in that I've sentence. I've never eaten these. Are you were so good? excited. You were so excited to get into this sentence. I don't, I don't know anyone that's actually had these and lived, so. Um, I'm not that excited, but Chris brought this up at work today, and I said that's the first news someone, story. Someone posted this in the on the monitor, like, news, news section um, of our Discord, and I was like, Amazing. They'll ship on January 26th if you pre-order them. Orders over $35 qualify for free shipping. So stock up 12 bags or more. Uh, next news story, please. Next news story, folks. Um, Nintendo bought Next Level Games. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Next Level Games are uh, the developers behind Super Mario Strikers, Mario Strikers Charged, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, Metro Prime Federation Force, Luigi's Mansion 3 for Nintendo. Uh, also, punch out for the Wii. I love that um, you made Luigi's Mansion sound like an afterthought when it was the biggest name on the list by yeah, absolute far. I don't care. Um, so yeah, they published other games, but these are the ones they bought. They published for Nintendo. Uh, so Nintendo has purchased them up. Nobody knows how much it was for. Uh, the deal closed on March first. Uh, I did see a rumor going around that it was Nintendo finally clamping down on. Uh, mario portrayals because apparently the super mario strikers portrayal of mario would like made japan angry or something uh, i'm not sure if that's actually true but that sounds wow. like something that would anger japan. this is their first uh first acquisition of an outside studio since like 2002 or something yeah they're uh canadian right oh is it canadian i thought it was european it could be canadian uh they're vancouver oh yeah so european yeah. i don't know um 
<laughs> I hate you. Basically Seattle. So <laughs> yeah, seriously. Basically. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, I, I wonder if they are going to let, I wonder if they're working on a game and they'll let them finish the game. I don't know. How does well, that work? Luigi's I, Mansion I, came out October oh, that's 31st, true. 2019. So they've got to have think, something in right now. I think this is just more of a thing of Nintendo is, Nintendo is in the business of only selling you nostalgia. Like they don't, they don't really have to make new things anymore. They do sometimes just for like the business of it, like you know, diversifying your portfolio. But uh, for the most part, they're just like, we, we can make whatever we want and you're going to buy it. And I think like we 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 basically already own this company. They make they make a subsection of games for us. Let's just yeah. own them wholesale. I wonder if their next game was gonna be a Nintendo one, anyways. Well, so let me let me read. This is uh, Polygon has an article on it, and they pulled some quotes from the Nintendo statement, and it says, "quote A number of owner directors of Next Level recently determined that the time is right for them to sell their shares," which basically means Next Level was looking for new shareholders, anyways, <laughs> major shareholders. And then uh, another quote from Nintendo, they expect an anticipated improvement in development speed and quality. So it's probably a big opportunity to buy the studio rather than let somebody else buy the studio. And at the same time, they're like, you know what? We've got games. It's a good thing going. So let's go ahead and buy it as opposed to let it get away from us. Nice. Yeah. I mean, the last last non-Nintendo exclusive game they made was the 2011 Captain America, like movie tie-in game. Game of the year, 2011. Game of the year every year. Um, here's the big question, though. <coughs> Does this mean we will finally get another Mario Strikers game? I never played like, a Mario so Strikers game. There was, on, uh, last year, Nintendo copyrighted something to do with Nin- Mario. It was another like Mario Sports thing. I can't remember the name of it right now. People were theorizing we're, we might get a new Mario Sports game that isn't necessary. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's Strikers, maybe it's something else. But people that was, that was like a rumor tossed around. You know, last year when we had nothing to talk about news because it was Rona times. It's going to be Mario yeah. and Sonic. At the you know, it, if they I mean, keep unfortunately, out, yeah, probably. <laughs> they they keep putting out the Mario Tennis games, which even though the last one was, was better than you expected, it still wasn't great. Then they could at least put out another Mario Strikers game. I like you Mario know? Strikers. Maybe Mario Slammers basketball. <gasps> Mario Slammers about uh, po- pogs and you slam them. <laughs> yes, Paper the- Mario. Paper Mario, right. but the battling mechanic is Pogs. <gasps> That's actually Ooh. not bad. That's mm. good. Quick, Heart run. Heart Nintendo's Heart. coming. <laughs> the snipers are across the street, Ian. <laughs> Doug, no! <laughs> um, okay, uh, next up is... Um, oh, I put two of mine in a row. Oh, well. Uh, Minecraft Earth. The hit <laughs> iPhone game that I played for about five minutes at my old job um, is ending. Uh, turns out, if you make a game based around mobility and going outside and hanging out with other people, uh, COVID said, no, no, no. But, uh, um, I, well, I don't Rotumbo, know. About, I've heard Pokemon name? Go is still doing great. And Pokemon they, they Go basically, made it so you don't have to walk anymore. Yeah. So yeah, they I feel introduced like, mechanics to basically accommodate for it. Um, I feel like Minecraft earth didn't, but they were also new enough that, cause they only went into, in, they only released it last year. Right. I, I feel like Minecraft earth never uh, took, uh, no, it had, right. to be, had to be 2019. Had to be 2019. Well, cause we were, we were still at, the yeah yeah sorry I, last year i meant 2019 17th october 2019 yeah yeah and i think will um, and i played it for five minutes that day we built a like four brick high thing in our office and then said all right i remember going cool ar like it, it had honestly it had yeah. pretty good ar tracking i just you know i mean did you guys ever get into pokemon go no yeah, but that's because I, I hate pokemon a decent amount when I first moved to the city, actually, because I was like, because when I lived in South Carolina, there was nothing for Pokestops. But like here, there's one in every every Starbucks corner. Uh, so I played it for a little while, uh, mostly when I was temping because I had very little else to do uh, with my days. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I did that. But like and, and Pokemon goes cool. It's it's whatever. But like that's really that's really it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like with these like AR real world games, it's like a combination of like lazy introverted social anxiety too judgmental yeah all those come together mean that i will never play these games for more than five minutes yeah like pokemon i feel like is big enough to to merit that um Mm -hmm. and minecraft suffers from two things one it's it is even if it's a huge like a you know a gigantic game it is still more niche than pokemon 
Um, yeah. And it's also like a social building thing. And uh, society sucks when you add other people to it. <laughs> but also, like, my, yeah. or, uh, like when you're playing Pokemon, you're like, oh, I wish I could go out there and catch real Pokemon. And then that's kind of like that. That's true. But when I'm yeah. playing Minecraft, I'm like, oh, I wish I could go outside and still play Minecraft. Wish I could go out and build something. I could <laughs> yeah. do that. I just don't really want to. Out of mud. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, dirt and, and rocks. The interesting thing I thought was anyone who made an in-app purchase in uh, the game will get Minecraft Bedrock Edition for free. I assume for the PC, but that made me think: if I just boot up the app and buy something for a dollar, do I get do I get a free Minecraft Bedrock? Is there something for a dollar though? Or something for for oh, nineteen ninety nine? Isn't uh, it in Game Pass now? Anyways, Minecraft. I am almost certain Ooh. that it is. It's probably true. If not, what does Minecraft cost? Ten dollars? Just buy oh, mine thirty. You know what? Java's what? twenty. I had to. I think it's twenty because I had to buy it for Karen because because uh, Java is the way to go. Um, I mean, I owned Minecraft like yeah. you know all the ways you can because I I just do. So I don't really care about this. Oh, Bedrock is. Edition is free on any Windows Ten PC. Thank you oh. for Chrome. Well, there. That there makes sense. Uh, quick plug for oh, our uh, community cool. Minecraft server. You join our Discord, you get access to it, and send me five dollars. Uh, Discord link in our chat right now. Uh, no, you don't have to send me five dollars. Uh, next up, news story. Ian, this is one you brought. Tell me all about tech tariffs. Yes. Um. So basically, I've been trying to buy an RTX 3080 card for more than a hundred days now since they were first made available. <laughs> He's counting, um, folks. I, I have yet that. to get one. I've gotten it in my cart a couple times. I've actually purchased one once and then had it canceled several days later. Basically, it's very hard to get these cards. They're not manufacturing a lot of them because of manufacturing constraints. They're not shipping a lot of them because of COVID constraints. People are wanting them like crazy because they're fantastic cards and they're great for everything from crypto mining to scientific reasons to 4K gaming, etc. So long story short, it's been hard to get them at MSRP. And MSRP just went up, folks, because there's basically a tariff related to technology items that was put in place by the Trump administration um on items coming from china and there were there were cutouts for things like power supplies motherboards and gpu cards well those cutouts they came back in effect so basically Yay. the tariff came back and as soon as it did uh companies like asus and msi etc they basically said these cards are now a hundred dollars more so wow. for example an rtx 3080 went from uh, I believe it went from uh, $749 to $859 overnight. Gee. They are passing on some of the tariff costs to the consumer, which it makes sense. I don't blame them for it. It's just, it sucks. These cards that are already very hard to find at MSRP, yeah. well, now MSRP is even higher. So um, <laughs> it's a matter of like, I get it. I'm not happy about it, but I get it. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, I'm not trying to say anything political, left or right, center, libertarian green etc but it's this is definitely one of those instances in which it you got to realize things are interconnected so if you're just some dingo like me who's trying to buy a graphics card and all of a sudden the price goes up maybe it's related to those politics you don't care about so it's one of those things where you know it's good to stay informed in politics it's good to vote for people whose policies you support or against people whose policies you don't support again i'm not endorsing a party or another this is just a good example of it actually politics do matter and they touch almost every aspect of life yeah and, and this is a very clear instance of including video games so uh just a crazy story it was funny because when the price increase happened um i believe asus was the first one to do it but they increased the msrp they didn't put out a press release yet so everybody was like oh they're scalping us the manufacturers are raising <laughs> the prices because they know they can get more for them we'll pay it anyways and then and then slowly the press releases came out and the journalists were like no wait maybe this is related to the tariff ending so it was like over a day people went from like outraged at the manufacturers scalping us to like outrageous tariffs you know <laughs> also <laughs> like crazy. also like oh no we want this product and they're gonna charge us more for it no it's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah supply and demand <laughs> welcome to economics 101 what is this yeah well so th there was a crazy story uh a couple months ago this was a couple weeks after the 3080 came out i can't remember the manufacturer so i'm not going to name one but basically there was a manufacturer who had a couple subsidiary companies so like you have gpu manufacturer and then you have like asia and gpu manufacturer you have like gpu plus manufacturer etc that is owned by the parent company 
and that company only does business through eBay. So you go to their eBay store and you buy cars through them. And they started selling GTX 3080s at like $1,400, $1,500, which is <laughs> like five, $600, $700 above wow. MSRP. <laughs> and, and people were livid on Reddit. They were like, excuse me, you are the manufacturer and now you're just shipping brand new cards to one of your subsidiaries to then scalp on eBay? And they immediately were like, oh no, we're sorry. We accidentally sent them this, these, you know, they're only supposed to get remanufactured cards and they're, they're doing this against orders and they like immediately shut it down. But there was literally an instance of a manufacturer scalping their own brand new cards rather wow. than sell it for MSRP. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. That's nuts. That's illegal. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I just wanted to bring it up. It's just a crazy news story on top of the crazy RTX release series saga already. Yeah, that's that's. I'm glad I'm not trying to buy a new graphics card because. Yep. That sucks. Uh, is a uh, quick question. Is that's something tariff, like that could be re repealed, ended tariffs um, end. Yeah, because I believe it was just an executive order. This tariff. Gotcha. It was and that's. Not, it was a not, passed through legislation so it'd be pretty easy to rescind it and for the dumb people watching the stream uh tariff would be that so that extra money that they pay to the tariff that they're trying to earn back by raising the price msrp that is taxed directly to the government uh yes so basically the money goes my, to the government that's right yeah so basically if you are importing something in the united states so like let's say i am asus usa and i am getting cards in from asus factory as soon as that hits U.S. shores, you pay the, money. Uh, customs customs says you need to pay an extra X amount of money gotcha. per item because of this tariff. That's it's something that, that's affected my job actually because because I deal with overseas manufacturers, etc. And some of the products we get in, we've had price increases because of tariffs. And that just you know. that's just on China right now, correct? Yeah, I believe it's only China. So a lot of people are switching their manufacturing to to Taiwan, etc. Gotcha. Singapore. Interesting. Um, great. Well, I'm excited for that. Uh, Chris, what's up with Respawn? So, uh, Respawn, I'm just gonna read the thing verbatim. Respawn's working on a mysterious new game that promises the players will be able to adventure forever in it. <sighs> um, it does note that this is a new IP, uh, that will feature some sort of rolling content schedule that means the game can be supported for years or longer. <laughs> Uh, I would like just like to note, just like to note, first of all, or longer. Uh, but second off, years is not forever. Um, that's, that's <laughs> oh, not adventure me? forever. But um, yeah, uh, respawn. This is just a weird thing. Respawn in all of their like job applications, they're just like, here's what we're working on. Whatever. Yeah. We don't care. It's Star Wars. Big whoop. Want to fight about it? <laughs> Which like got lightsabers. For people that talk about gaming news, hey, Respawn, thanks, dog. Um, hey, we're working on a mediocre Star Wars game. You want to come help? <laughs> you got it. We're and... thinking an 8 out of 10, 7 around there. <laughs> but say, we're, we're literally aiming for like a 75 out of 100. If you guys can help with that. <laughs> and then Respawn's like, hey, that's our fucking niche, baby. Ah, dang it. You know. We're going to release it right after the Game Awards so everybody completely forgets about it and it's hey, not available for any nominations. Here, here, here you go. We'll just release it in a terrible year so it'll still make it on some people's Game of the Year list. <laughs> hey, what if There's they just interviewed me in the... Taste. What if they just interviewed the game director in the crowd and made him say the name of the game and then nothing else? Oh, oh my goodness. I forgot about that. Love you, 3 um, so Great. What a well -run. I'm excited. I like Titanfall 2. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, liked... honestly, respawn doesn't really make doesn't really miss. They pretty much make good stuff, for almost exclusively. So I'm pretty amped yeah. for this. Yeah, Apex is good. Um, uh, Star Wars, Titanfall think about... Two is one of the best first person shooters in the last like ten years. Yeah, I, I was just thinking about that because playing um, uh, Call of Duty: Colon Black Ops: Space Cold War, I was like, you know what? I miss good FPS so single player campaigns, and it made me want to replay uh, Titanfall Two. So I mean, the last two bad. levels of that game are like, probably. Like, arguably some of the best like first person shooter levels that exist yeah. yeah there's there's a there's a a mission environment in um cold war that is like i see you're getting creative here and you're really trying something but you're not quite pulling it off and it just yeah, reminded me of rough. that fantastic house building factory area oh, in Titanfall 2. i forgot about that that was incredible so the level design in that game is amazing. Even the first yeah. level where you have to go get the individual parts to boot the robot up. Oh, God. you just made me remember. I forgot. You made me remember. I've forgotten enough of Titanfall two to play it again. <laughs> there you go, yeah. man. I'm yeah. gonna play that. Um, but I do hope the multiplayer sucks, though. 
Yeah. It isn't it's future. Dead. I mean, it, I, I'm kind of hoping they branch out. I, I, want, I feel I like want something. The phrase yeah, adventure no. forever makes me oh, think. I'm sorry. Well, a lot of people are saying it's going to be a destiny. Like, I'm sorry, but Chris, you said respawn doesn't miss, but I don't know if you're aware of the medal of honor above and beyond VR game. That I'm respawn that it exists. I didn't play it. It came no, out. It came out. I did not play it because it got terrible reviews. So I'm, actually a little worried now that i think about it because i don't know what team they're putting this on well i can't you know imagine I mean? that team I, I i hope not but at the same time that it's just shipped done, a game so, so maybe like, yeah maybe but i feel like that's so <sighs> quick to start to start a new fully fleshed out project yeah it's it's just that's the only thing that makes me hesitant is i well, wasn't a big fan of fallen order but it was still well done and then medal of honor apparently was just like just real bad so mm -hmm. Well, I'm a lot like of people it. think it might be the Apex team because the Apex team was recently split. They added a bunch of people and then split the team mm -hmm. um, because it was, and it's a smaller team now now maintaining Apex because I think that game is uh, not winding down, but I think they're like devoting less resources to it because they for a while yeah. took people from other teams to put them onto the Apex team. Yeah, gotcha. Um, to be fair, that game is um, great, though. I don't blame. I, I will say. When I think about games, when I think about developers that could do Destiny better, Respawn is definitely up there in terms of getting three, four, three. Respawn, like they just they just know FPSs so well. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean they, they were literally invented to do so. So I I'm not surprised yeah. by that fact. But yeah, what if what if somebody took Destiny away from Bungie and made it actually good? Yeah, you gotta get Activision's claws out of it though. <laughs> They're already out. Yeah, but the talent marks are still there. You gotta, they, <laughs> they're no, fresh. You know, we, gotta, we gotta bandage those up. <laughs> um, I don't think we've had this discussion before, but Will and I have. It's like it's time to start blaming Bungie for their own mistakes. <laughs> That's you know? fair. That's fair. I, I mean, I, I, I've never liked Bungie as a company. I like. I don't know. I don't know how they became like internet darlings. Like when they're just like, another mm -hmm. scummy FPS company. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, just to go back to VR, because you mentioned it, uh, mm -hmm. that Hitman 3 VR trailer came out today, and boy, I wish I had a PSVR, because... It, it looked good. It looked, it looked like good, so but much fun. The PSVR is a terrible piece of hardware. Oh, so yeah. yeah. It looked... Just, I mean, it just looked like fun. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, uh, it looked it looked just goofing over, over the top enough, which is like a, a line that Hitman rides very well. Yeah. Yes. So I, I'm yes. kind of bummed about that, but... Also, in other news, uh, Donald Trump can no longer use his Oculus. Uh, very sad about that. Because he's been banned mm. off Facebook. One mm. of the best I, things to come out of. Still, still 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 <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, nothing else going on with him. Uh, my, <laughs> my next story here. Uh, so, uh, a Twitter user, Hey, I'm Heroic, did some digging. Uh, I believe they're part of the modding community for Breath of the Wild. I'm, I, sorry, excuse you. They're a certified me expert. Uh, they're yes, they do say that they're certified me expert. Um, well, they're, they're the only person on the certification board, so yeah. <laughs> um, ESRB rated. Uh, apparently, Breath of the Wild NPCs appear to be based on advanced me's. Uh, I think the gist of that is that they use some sort of thing based off of the me's from Nintendo to then create the characters in uh, the. Breath of the Wild. This only applies to the highly inhuman human characters. Uh, the quote here I took was, Hi, me expert here. Uh, this is written by Hey, I'm a Heroic. Turns out the NPCs in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild used an advanced version of the me format. That means wi that with modding, you can inject me's into the game. Uh, there's a couple pictures in the link uh, of uh, like comparing me's to the characters in the game, and then also people being like, Oh, I wonder if this character is based off Awada's me, and I wonder if this character is based off of Robin Williams, and all this other stuff. Uh, it's not mm -hmm. a huge discussion point. Uh, I just figured it'd be cool to talk about that. It's one of those that. things that's like I don't I don't know what to do with this information, but I recognize that it's very cool and very interesting. Yeah, it's neat. I, I hope like a mod comes out of it because I, I have an idea brewing, and uh, that would be a cool mod to uh, check yeah. out in that game. It'd be cool if someone made a mod where it's a almost like a roguelike uh, Breath of the Wild, where you're just playing as different oh. randomly generated me Hylians. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's pretty I I just really like the idea of them. You know, there were there were some um, there were some dice talks earlier about 
basically the tools they used for development and how that helped them. And I just really like the idea of the developers going, we need to make these characters and somebody saying, well, let's just use, let's just use a modified version of the me creator. Like it's already been made. It already works really well. We'll tweak it a little bit. We'll dump it into a new version of me's. It, it's just, it's so smart. And it works, and it's how they were able to put that game together so well is just by removing as much development friction as yeah. possible. And that, that's fantastic. Yeah, real smart. Uh, so uh, keep an eye on that, see what comes out of that. Uh, Chris, uh, tell me about PUBG. So uh, in a translated, it looks like someone's like notes section on their phone, uh, PUBG Corp confirms they're working on PUBG 2.0 and PUBG Mobile 2.0. I noted this probably won't get PUBG Mobile unbanned in India, which was its biggest market. <laughs> um, it was it was such a problem there with people playing it too much, they had to ban it nationally. That's, That's crazy. crazy. Wow. Um, we have linked images of translation. It's kind of unclear if this is a full sequel or not with the, with the PUBG 2.0 being the monitor. If it was just PUBG 2... I'd be like, okay, it's a sequel. 2.0 makes it sound like maybe this is a Fortnite Chapter 2 type situation. Yeah, or like a big upgrade. Or, yeah, like, like a big thing. Uh, but it also uses the phrase authentic sequel, whatever that means. I can also see them uh, an authentic sequel. like calling it PUBG 2, so when it's released, it's not immediately, it's not already banned in India. Like, they'd have to pass. Yeah. Well, I also wonder thing. if they're going to drop the, the PU joke there out of uh out of the PUBG branding because it is just called ba battlegrounds or bad oh that's true places. yeah um, and also yeah. like PUBG it, it, if you just say PUBG it sounds fine but when you say it's player player unknowns battleground it's just like what yeah um yeah yeah I mean I, I we Will and I were shocked when we pulled up the the player count for this game it's still what was like a third was, of a million people yeah, played it every single day four hundred fifty thousand is still the regular peak yeah it's huge outside the u.s you know because um, the u.s is basically fortnite central now but yeah but outside of it especially in asia it's it's still big it's yeah. still a better game than fortnite to be clear yeah, yeah um, to be perfectly clear uh, i'm actually i i actually put, pulled up a thing because I, I was curious to see like what the current state of the game is uh they made a lot of improvements to that game it doesn't run nearly as hitchy as it used to even like I, even when it was like in its hey we're finished now form but like yeah the game mm -hmm. it looks like they've done a lot of good stuff to it i might try to play it a little bit, That's bit not again a bad idea uh, Maybe for a stream. It doesn't seem likely that I'd play too much of it. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm Will, Will made the joke of uh, I'm very excited to see how this ties into Callisto Protocol. Oh yeah, Calico the Callisto Protocol? Project. Oh yeah, the, the Dead Space, the Dead Space set in the PUBG universe that's coming out, uh, which did, I'm very excited make, for. It did, it did make you and I say, um, "What if it's PUBG but in space?" Which I I am so here for. Yeah. Um, PUBG also, on a space station. Heck yeah! There's that prologue game that uh, Player Unknown himself is working on, which isn't confirmed to be a PUBG game, but with a game name like Prologue, isn't I it assume... Prologue colon a battleground story? I think it, it's just Prologue period. Oh, still um, weird. Yeah, so that'd be cool, but <laughs> I'm guess it has to be a PUBG related thing. Uh, anyways, up next, um. The Dishonored co-creator is working on a new arcane game with the Dishonored and Prey developers. Uh, speaking to a Spanish-speaking game site, uh, Vandal, I, I assume they're a Spanish game site because the site was in Spanish, but I tried to Google Vandal and I could not find a link to the website. So, oh, is um, Vandal a... Fox? Oh, wait, I'm, I'm sorry. You're saying you couldn't find a link to the Vandal article? No, there was a link to the Vandal article, but then I couldn't, I couldn't find the website outside of the article. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. I thought Vandal was like a Vox property. I, I think either I was being very stupid or like, I, I think because it's vandal.lspanol.com. Right, right, right. I just meant I was trying to like Google for them to see like the an official thing from them or anything, but I couldn't. Did you really go find to the it. Spanish Google? Oh, I didn't go to Spanish. I don't know what you're complaining about, but I, I'm done making fun of you if you want to move I was on. trying to find like a wiki page so I could be like, oh, this is this, officially this is what a, they are. This is a Spanish games media yeah, outlet. So that's basically what I said. Uh, so uh, Harvey Smith said, uh, I'm not on Deathloop. I'm on something else working with guys who made Dishonored and Prey. Uh, Dishonored games. Did you guys play those and like them? I have played every I... Dishonored game and DLC. I played the first one. I played it for about five hours and then I dropped it because um, it it was trying to present like a living world. But I remember there is an area in the first game 
and I snuck in there early and I killed everybody. And then I went back to the main story and they were like, here's your mission. Go to this area. And I went back there and everybody was alive again. And so I dropped it after that. I think it was a fantastic world. Great story. I think it has some cool mechanics and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just, that, that was enough to break my, the break the world illusion for me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I played the first one and beat it. And then the second one I've tried recently, not when it came out. And I was like, eh. Um, Chris, you said you, you've beaten them all. Yeah, I played played uh, all of them in, in the DLCs. Um, Dishonored One, I think, is a fantastic game. Like, just every, I think it pretty much nails everything. I, I do agree. There is a bit of like the uh, problem with the whole like it's an open world, but also when you're not on a mission that involves this part, that part of the world doesn't matter. So there's no yeah. point in going to a different part of the level that you don't need to go to. Um, but uh, like, oh, like that that game, its aesthetic is it nails it completely, perfectly on the first try, which is crazy for a new IP at the time. Um, and I think it's overall, it's just a cool game. I, I like, you know, it's basically, Hey, we fixed thief that the guys, guys when they remade <laughs> yeah. thief. Um, yeah. oh. and, uh, Dishonored uh, two is a really good game. Uh, it does struggle. So Dishonored has the whole, you can either do all the basically good karma, uh, don't kill people and uh, do it the perfect selfie way or the bad karma kill everyone way. Um, that's basically what the endings break down to. There's not really much of a neutral ending. Um, Dishonored 2 unfortunately, has the same system which is great and all but unfortunately because you can play as either the main character from Dishonored 1 or the princess in Dishonored 2 um, uh, that game has a really bad problem of there's actually different correct endings for both characters uh, uh, where you're supposed oh. to play the princess is the lethal path and the and Corvo is the non-lethal path which is like which is a cool concept but look y'all I'm not going to play your game twice to get both of the endings to then get the true ending because you got the two separate endings <laughs> i'm not gonna do that come on yeah. please so like a uh, sane person i watched the true ending on youtube <laughs> like a I sane beat the person game once. um okay and also uh i was gonna say thoughts on prey uh quick uh i liked prey a lot the first three fourths of it were very good and then yeah but the last one of the endings was not okay. great it kind of was i uh, honestly the first twist I kind of guessed but that ending twist. I did not. And that was what got me. But other than that, I hate the ending twist. Yeah, it's kind of stupid, but it's also neat. I, I will say that has it. one of the best first hours in video games. Yes, it's very good. Um, okay, moving on. Chris, uh, what is Roblox? Oh, I don't want to talk about this. Uh, <laughs> Roblox uh, is trying to go public. They've done this before. They're trying again. Uh, and they want they think they think their market evaluation is 30 billion dollars that's a billion with a b the big one um which is wild to me because this game averages about a thousand viewers on twitch which is not a lot but uh they make a crap ton of money and have 180 million concurrent players sorry uh unique players a month which is a lot <laughs> that's uh, crazy. they uh, they they were evaluated at four billion dollars by the sec last time they tried to get an ipo uh, they recently raised about a half a billion in fundraising, and uh, they've also been making a ton of money. By the way, they somehow never made a, a profit on this game, which is wild to me. Um, but yeah, they're asking the SEC for an evaluation, and they think they're worth $30 billion. So we'll see about that. When was the... That's... Does it say when the orish- initial evaluation was? Uh, I don't uh, I don't remember it saying, early... so it probably just didn't say it. Early in the year, that had suggested the company wanted to double its then most recent valuation from four to eight. La- that's last year. Well, was- so let me put it this way: I'm looking at fourth quarter 2019 numbers. They made 138 million dollars revenue. They made how much money? 138 million dollars of revenue in a single quarter in 20. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, for a, this for is a, for a 20 year old game. Roblox is, I'm not. I'm not saying they're worth thirty billion, but they are worth a lot of money. They they are similar to Candy Crush, Farmville, uh, Clash of Clans, etc. They are one of those games that you should not pay attention to because it's bad. But for somehow they have captured a market, and they are horribly monetized, and they are definitely rolling yeah. in cash. It's also worth note that companies do you do put yourself at a higher number when you're going to the SEC, expecting them to knock you down. Yes. Yeah, that's, so that, that's the thing you do. So they'll probably be evaluated around 20 or 15 billion, which is still a lot of money for a 20 year old game. Yep. Um, uh, great. Roblox. 
Not I don't I don't know. We were watching a Twitch stream today and I was confused. Um yeah, final... I, I don't even know. It, Roblox is like I wouldn't even say it's it's not like League of Legends where like you can ignore it but it's popular on Twitch. It's it's a it's a YouTube game. It is 100% it is, YouTube. It game. is it is a content creator game which I Yeah, all, yeah. All the and then it's it's all the little kids are in it. And the kids are in it and then they just start spending money on it. Uh, so it looks like I got to get in this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we should become Roblox streamers. Uh. Okay. Um, I love the way Chris says it. Rob locks. It makes it. Rob there's locks, a guy, whatever. guy who sells locks named Rob. Robert Lock. Mario, Mario playing Rob locks over there. <laughs> oh no, I am that guy. Now. Oh, we no. should make. We should make a game called Rob locks. R a w b l o x. Oh, this is good. Rob. Uh, speaking of good ideas, uh, it's a good idea for you to go read this Xbox 20 year anniversary article. By Bloomberg, how an American video game empire was born. It's got a lot of interesting tidbits, like how they Microsoft wanted to buy Nintendo at one point. Tried to buy Nintendo. <laughs> uh, after the N sixty four, I believe came out. Um, uh, I I didn't take any notes from it because honestly, it's just basically reading about the history from the and it, it's an article is very interestingly interestingly written because it's all snippets of interviews. And there's no other voice other than the people directly talking. Yeah. And then occasionally so, some flavor text to like lead you to the next thing. But yeah. uh, so it's not the, like the Nintendo bit. Um, I'll give a little bit of context on the Nintendo bit. Basically, instead of to do to kind of jumpstart their their foray into the games industry, they were looking at companies to buy. They reached out to EA. EA said no. Then they went to Nintendo. They actually met with Nintendo and they quote just laughed their asses off like imagine an hour of somebody just laughing to you that was kind of how that meeting went end quote <laughs> that's so good um but they also say they had nintendo in our building in january 20 2000 to work through the details of a joint venture where we gave them all the technical specs of the xbox the pitch was their hardware stunk and compared to sony playstation it did so the idea was listen you're much better at the game portions of it with mario and all that stuff i'm sorry mario and all that stuff why don't <laughs> you, you let us take care of the hardware but it didn't work out. That's actually an interesting partnership is basically they either buy or partner with Nintendo. Nintendo takes care of the games. Microsoft takes care of the hardware. That would have been crazy good now that it I would, think about it. It yeah. would have completely reshaped how games as an industry is now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was that was kind of a, a nice tidbit to see. Yeah, in that's this. interesting. Uh, so definitely go give that a read. That's over uh, on Bloomberg. I'll I'll try to post the articles in the YouTube archive too. Just so people can uh, check them out. Um, that's the news, folks. Uh, how are you guys feeling? Good about news. <laughs> Good about news? You were enjoying the news? You know, honestly, it's um, first, second week of 2021, whatever you want to call it, in the middle of the second COVID lockdown. Pretty good news lineup. Yeah, considering this, what we don't normally get the rest of around yeah. this time of year. I would rate this news lineup a solid 7 out of 10. Wow. Oh, it's the you heard that, folks? <laughs> oh, I was going to say the fallen order of news. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, moving on from the news, uh, we're going into a little bit. We'll try to be quick on this since uh, it is already been an hour, but not too quick, folks. Uh, we're going to talk about the 2021 video game releases release schedule. Uh, we're just going to take like a brief look at it, uh, kind of comb through it. Say what we're looking forward to, what we're not looking forward to. Uh, I thought that would be... I, I had another topic that I was going to teach you guys about, but this seemed like more fun, and I will save that for another time. Uh, also, I was too lazy to do that. I wouldn't do the research for it. <laughs> um, anyways, let's do this. Uh, you guys got the webpage open? I do. Yes, uh, sir. We'll kind of go through this. Uh, actually, let me post this in the chat if you want to... Another Christmas cracker. Yeah, there's not that many at once we get to April, so we can actually uh, just meme through the the dumb ones in January and February. Because <laughs> yeah. I do want to, I do have a couple of small jokes. Um, uh, Ian, I know you're excited about this first one. Let's go. Uh, I, was, I I've never seen Cobra Kai. I heard it's a good TV show. I was just surprised by the fact that it exists because I thought Hollywood movie <laughs> slash TV crossover video games was kind of dead as a genre. So to see one every now and then is like. Oh, I guess they are occasionally making some of those. So <laughs> it's Cobra Kai. The Karate Kid saga continues. Came out two days ago. So grab your copy for PC. Uh, next up uh, on here. What's Iron Conflict? 
No idea. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I'm maybe we should one. just do highlights and skip uh, all the I way am, ahead to. I, I, I am doing three on January twentieth. Wow, you're just like plowing away. Okay, man, twenty. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I, I just was genuinely, I, for a second, I thought it was Iron Harvest. That's why I was confused. Hitman 3, January 20th. I already pre-ordered the expensive edition because I like IO Interactive and I want them to have money. Uh, the medium, January 28th, looks like a spooky, scary game. Yeah, it looks uh, cool. I mean, I won't, they be, apparently, I won't be playing because I don't have an Xbox, but it looks great. They apparently patented, uh, scary. something. They patented the two camera thing. Uh, so yeah, we'll it's like the way that, that goes. The, the the engine works. It's like a it's like it's basically an engine that can have one thing influence the other. It's it's a whole thing. Yeah. So I'll probably check that out on stream, uh, because I thought that'd be funny to play a scary game. Uh, February, Control Ultimate Edition. Uh, me thought that already came out. It did not. Uh, Xbox no. Series XS. Speaking of Control Ultimate Edition, I played some Control on Luna today, the Amazon oh, yeah. Stadia oh, competitor. Uh, uh, are you allowed to talk about that? Uh, yes, I'm pretty sure I am. This is just early access. How about I cover for you while you look it up real quick? Uh, okay. Control, look, I know it's, it's <laughs> Control, but it's the next gen edition that comes out on February 2nd. You do not get this. With, yeah, I was about to say, yeah. It's not a free upgrade. I, I think, actually, I think it's only a quote-unquote free upgrade if you bought the new Control Game of the Year edition. Correct, yes. Up. If you have that edition, it's it's an automatic upgrade. The old edition, I, I want to say you get a discount, but I cannot confirm that. Yeah, I, can, yeah. I, I think, I'm interested to see how this performs in terms of hardware, because Control was, it, it's it's been a ray tracing darling on the PC, so I'm curious to see if it fully takes advantage of yeah. the hardware ray tracing. We're on. talking about the other because I wasn't aware of the fact that like it, you can see yourself in like windows and stuff. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, but the problem was, but was, also it was it mean, to run it before the 3000 series cards. Yeah. But also, I believe the ultimate edition is going to just be out uh, on Game Pass Day One. So if you have an Xbox, you want to play this, you're great. If you have a PlayStation, well, <laughs> sucks yeah. to suck. Yeah. Yep. Um, I don't uh, see anything about anything about not talking about it because I, I was invited okay. to it straight through Amazon and their FAQ says nothing about it. I, I mean, I could probably stream it. I'm not going to because uh, anyways, it just like I play control and it's like wasn't even on. It was 1080, but it like there were no reflections in the glass even like I was like, no, oh, maybe they'll have like a little bit of the ray oh. tracing, like nice stuff. Uh, and it didn't even load that, that fast, and it didn't even. That, play that, that sounds well. like they're just running it on bad hardware and then yeah. streaming it from that, so, as opposed to yeah, which kind of sounds like it might be the case overall. Uh, so yeah. I reminded myself to cancel that in six days, which I'll probably just cancel it now because now. I don't care about cloud <laughs> gaming. How do I? I literally gaming? keep closing this tab. Uh, next up, uh, what Neo Two? Don't care. Neo Collection Neo might collection. care about that. Super Mario 3D World plus Bowers, Bowers, Bowser's Fury. Uh, I'm looking forward Great to playing game. that. Uh, I yeah, love it's, Super it's Mario on, 3D it's, World. It's on a console that doesn't suck now. Thank God. Yeah. Uh, hey, I don't have to pull it Wii out. Wii U underrated console. That game had console had some bangers, and it was cheap. Oh too. yeah. It it, do, it does have the best legacy collection of video games on anything. I got it's mine on, for so cheap. Amazing. I I split it with my ex, and then when. When we broke up, she said I could just keep it. So I paid <laughs> for half a Wii U. And it was refurbished. Uh, moving on to yep. March. Uh, unless you Ripley Default wait a 2. I was going to say, did yeah, you have anything to say, to say about Ripley Default 2? I'm didn't very I was excited about, about it. Soon. I've, uh, so, I, oh, I just my phone. It was slated for, I want to say October of last year originally. Maybe it was November. Uh, and then obviously COVID happened and it got pushed, which is very uh, unfortunate because I actually thought it was going to be a pretty big That's deal it. last year. Um, but yeah, I mean, Bravely Default 1 is fantastic bravely second which is the second game in this series this is this is the third game in the series gonna have two in the title um mm -hmm. it's also very good i mean uh the team that makes that they also made octopath traveler they just make good good old rpgs don't they yeah i don't uh, i mean one day i would actually i'm gonna be honest with you guys i would love to like jrpgs and i haven't played enough mm -hmm. to know that i don't like jrpgs but boy, I could not care less about Bravely I, Default I used 2. to have a theory that if you didn't play a JRPG early on in your gaming experience, you were never going to be able to like them. I've been proven wrong on that because there are several people that got into JRPGs later on. But uh, yeah, they're they're look, man, they're very long, big, grindy video games. 
yeah, I have an uncanny ability to get into video games. So I think I, I want to play Chrono Trigger. I, I've said that. 2021 RPG question with I think Will and it. other members of the Subpixel team. Yeah. So I'm going to do Chrono Trigger at some point. Uh, anyways, moving on. Uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon for PlayStation 5. Both of you have played that. Game that game is so already, good. Right? Speaking of long JRPGs. Uh, yeah. Oh, good. you know what? Is Yakuza 0 a JRPG? No. No. No, no, no. But Like a Dragon is. Oh, right. Yeah, that's why. Uh, sorry. You uh what about return anal anyone excited for that playstation 5 march 19th i which one is yeah. this it's a terrible oh, name yeah, that's, that's that's the uh that's the roguelike by housemark yeah um i mean i'm kind of excited for it i don't want to play we'll be playing it that's about it yeah I, I i'll check it out on my playstation 5 um that's about it um yuck is a six song of life is that's that just, just a, a release that's just a oh that's remaster. a uh monster hunter rise demo for you the skipped, switch just came skipped, out today. it takes two baby is that a good game that's the that's the the cop game by the guys that made uh, oh i am looking for brothers <gasps> hazelite yes hazelite. man brothers I didn't even... and what's the other one uh joseph get out knock it out get a way out the way out a way out thank you um i i totally should have put this karen and i have been playing through a way out it is genuinely a good co-op game and very fun um, I had been putting it off because I heard it was not good. It's fun. I'm having it's a blast. Yeah. There's so much to do. So, yes, it takes two. I'm very looking forward to that. And I'm going to play yeah, it. It looks cute. It's fun. Looking. Um, Monster Hunter Rise, they had a whole release trailer today. Um, I'm very excited about this game. You no, know, I, I should play Monster Hunter World. World is so... I will happily play it with you on stream. That game is so good. I might, I might do that. I should get into that. Um... Rise looks good. Uh, they added um, that whip wire thing that looked kind of cool. You can ride wyverns now, so that's pretty fun. Um, and of course, Terminator that's Resistance video. Enhanced. We're all looking for. Let's go! Finally, we, the people have been asking for it. They've been they've been in the forums. They've been on Twitch. They've been demanding. <laughs> Finally, here it is. March uh, twenty six. I just don't understand it. Like, if you if you've made a crappy game that basically is going to do ninety nine percent of sales the day it releases. Why not just have the PS5 next gen version ready to go when those consoles launch? Why even act like push it later? And if you have to push it later, then cancel it and make a different game. You're not going to get anything off this. Come on, this is wasted dev resources. My thing is like, do these games make money? I mean, they, they probably must. Do. They they make a little How, bit of though, and then they make a lot of money. 99 cent sale and people are like what should i buy and then it's a 99 cent sale that's pretty true. much you never play it yeah I guess. um april 2021 outriders which is the destiny like i think everything uh, looks like that one's that's that's like the squad based one yeah it's people can fly which always makes some crazy games this could be interesting but yeah. i think it's so like you're a team in, of three yeah drop in draw up drop out co-op shooter is how they describe it. And there's a demo I'll, I'll out in I, I'll probably stream it twice, and if it's cool, I might keep up with it, but probably not. Other than that, yeah, I'll, I'll check it out. Let, let it die out back with Destiny 2. Yeah. Destiny 2. Uh, April 22nd, Humankind. Uh, genuinely yeah. looking forward to that. The, I love the first real competitor to Civ. Civ is... Um, um, Civ has gotten pretty, I don't want to call it stale because they keep introducing mechanics and stuff, but I just, I don't like Civ anymore. I feel like it's just gotten to a point where they don't really know what to do with the series and they keep doing weird things with it. They're not really addressing core problems. They're not really iterating. They're not really actually making sequels. They just keep yeah. kind of remaking the same game. So I'm excited for there to be some competition. I don't know if it's actually going to be good or not, but let's, let's try it. It's an yeah. early access. I believe you can just play this right now to make your own decision on that. Uh, uh, yeah, it is in early access right now. Oh, it really dropped me, and I have several hundred. I might be on Epic, uh, Epic Games Store only, um, and I have like several hundred hours in Civ Five, so that was shocking to me that Civ Six was kind of schmeh. Yeah, oh yeah, you might be right. But while Will's checking that, a uh, near replicant version. I'm not reading these numbers. Uh, re version one point two, bunch of other stuff. It comes out on April twenty third of the year. Uh, that is the remake of near Gestalt and near the other one. Um. Uh, yeah, which I mean, hey, Near Automata is a fantastic game. Not enough people played the first two Near games, and nobody played the Dragon Guard series except for me. Um, so I'm excited for this. I, I'm gonna play it. Uh, it's gonna be a fun slash slash hack, hack and slash game, but that's it's Near. It's gonna be weird and horny. 
<laughs> uh, humankind yeah. is uh, on uh, Steam, Epic Game Store, and Stadia currently in early access. There you go. Got it. I, I, I'm out? pretty sure I've heard good things about it. Okay, that's good. I could be, I could be thinking of something like another Civ like, but I'm almost certain it's it's humankind. Um. Uh. Yeah. So moving on to May. Anyone know what Sire the beginning is? I I just opened it up. I have no it's clue. A game we skip over. That's yeah. What it is. Uh, I Death can't Loop. find anything on it. Moving on. Death Loop comes I'm out. Not in excited for May. Death Loop. I'm, I'm I'm done. Looks okay. I'm, I'm excited. It looks. I'm really excited. Good, actually. I'm not hyped or anything. I yeah, what has me hyped like, was what like, I'll play what has it. Me, but I'm not, I, yeah. What has me hyped is the last trailer where they basically did a little bit of the gameplay mechanics talk through and they talked about how basically like you need to kill these three people in a day and you can go kill them separately, but you're going to run out of time. So now you need to go in the morning to engineer circumstances such that they all arrive at the same location at the end of the day. And it felt like this crazy hitman scenario that's larger and bigger where you're trying to do events so that you're orchestrating people towards certain directions to then execute the perfect mission ending. And that's the that thing cool. that got me interested in. If they basically made a giant FPS hitman level that is longer, bigger, and more complicated, I'm 100 percent in. Yes. Yeah, I mean, like, but like with like how how intricately designed the dishonor levels are, I mean that team knows level design probably better than anyone else in the industry currently. So I'm that for that mm -hmm. much I'm very excited. Um, like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hype this game up and I'm not gonna wait for it on bated breath. Yeah, I agree. Uh, moving on to June, uh, Back for Blood. That is a game I am hyped for. I'm very excited. Very excited to see to the next Left 4 Dead game and, and to stream this game. Yeah. So let me uh, let me pour a little cold water on it. So okay, so this is the studio that made the original Left 4 Dead. Uh, Left 4 Dead is is kind of a time and place thing for me, where it was a great co op game when there weren't really co op games, but that's a pretty short game and there wasn't a whole lot of replayability to it in a way other than just like replaying the same missions over and over again. And I'm worried that you can't just make another left for dead in today's world because co-op games have evolved. You really need to have more replayability than that. So if they don't do it right, it could end up just being kind of a, we played together for five hours and we're not going to touch it again. Did you yeah. play world war Z the good one? No. Okay, yeah. I would recommend maybe giving that a try because that is just Left 4 Dead with a, uh, you know, it's just more Left 4 Dead, um, and yeah. it it works. It feels good. It's fun. It's engaging. Yeah, yeah. They, but I mean, they did a good I, job of giving you missions. I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm saying this is the studio that bet the house on evolve. Yeah, yeah. And that I, was about, I was about to bring evolve. So that's that's the thing is like this looks good, but I I I I, I don't know. I don't want to get hyped for it because it, it could just fall flat. Are there two World War Z games? I believe yeah. so. I believe there's a movie tie-in game and then the one that's good. Oh, okay. Yeah, the one that's good is the one I like. And they're making a new game. <laughs> they're making that, the the one that was announced at Game Awards, the medieval Robin Hood yes. four-player co-op uh, game. Uh, what's it called? Uh, is it Hood something? Hood, leg Hood colon legend something. Cold War. Um, yeah, Cold War. So that's Under every hood. hashtag. Hood y'all legends. Hood y'all legends. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyways, Godfall. Uh. So those are all the games that are currently have dates in the year of our Lord 2021. There is a bunch of to be announced. I don't know if you guys want to go through those at all. I mean, um, we can skim just... through them because some of the, so most of these are garbage. Uh, yeah. I'm excited for 12 minutes. That game is not coming out anytime soon, though, because apparently that game will take a billion years to be finished. <laughs> uh, yeah, being called 12, 12 minutes. minutes. Didn't they like they like redid a bunch of stuff in that last? They trailer. got a bunch of new voice actors like Willem Dafoe. What, when is Biomutant coming out? I have wanted to play it. I, I looked I think forward they just to said it today that it's within within a couple months. OK, because it looks good. I, I'm not saying it, it looks like a solid seven out of ten. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It just means like it looks like my uh, Crackdown Three, where I can just play it. And, I feel like, like have that a fun game time. has been in development for a million years. I, I've it's been on my Amazon list forever because I forget why I put it on there, and I see it. I just leave it there because I see it and I go, someday you'll be out. What about um, Earth Defense Force World Brothers, which is Voxel Earth Defense Force? Oh, is it really? That's cool. Very yeah. like that. I like EDF. Uh, 
Does Cyberpunk 2077, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series XS come out next th- or this year? It comes out. It's, it, yes. What Satan God, God only knows. Is this um, Dark Alliance game just, related to we, all, we also skipped over Boyfriend Dungeon, which I am excited about. Ooh, boyfriend that is a dungeon. roguelike where you pick your weapon at the beginning of the run and your weapon is a personified person that you can romance. Mm-hmm. Oh, and depending true. on like how how much you use them and how well you progress with them through the game, you get like you progress their romance path, and I'm very excited about that. Uh, uh, there is that new D and D game Cry, coming out, Far Cry Six, which does not have. Not a excited. Right I'm the, I'm over. The, I'm over yeah. Far Cry since four. Four was the one where mm. I was like, ah, I'm kind of done with this franchise. You skipped Earth Defense for six because let's be honest. EDF. Easy. Four, five, like four and five yeah, were true. basically the same. So six is probably just going to be the very same. True. I got to finish five. Yeah, I just won't play you can play. this time. You are you are the <gasps> alien. Bugs. That's how they could do it. Uh, uh, Far Cry Ghost six. Wire, yes, Ghostwire Tokyo. Ghostwire Tokyo. That, that game coming out this year, actually. <laughs> no, Ghost yeah, Runner yeah, came out the year. No, is that, is that game coming out? Actually, oh, is it? I tell uh, you what game. What game is not coming out this year? Is God of War? God, no uh, way! It's, it says 2021 there. No way that's coming out this that year. That trailer I said 2021, it. didn't it? It said 2021, but there was nothing in the trailer. It was just yeah. like a, it was like an icon and then the name reveal, and it was like, why are you showing me this if it's going to be out in the next 12 months? You know? Yeah. Okay. Here, here's a question: When do we get the press release that says, due to uh, global circumstances, but this game's been delayed? Do we get it like soon, or do we get it in? It's like, got to be before September? the end of the fiscal year, right? They'll put that out. Oh, I like yeah, I'm thinking before. I'm thinking between E3 and Gamescom. Oh, I can see that. Oh, it's uh. By the way, it's Hood Outlaws and Legends because I see it on the list here. Oh, oh okay, gotcha. Um, That's Halo like Infinite game. does that come out this year? Oh, you skipped. Yeah, you, you skipped two big ones E-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z
Yes, but apparently it doesn't actually do much. It still has a lot of those like like oh. frame skip issues. Oh. That's so it's annoying. like Come on. I can play uh, I can play Last of Us 2 now. Um wow. I no, am Last Jesus Us, Christ. Last of Us 2 is not free. I, I know I was joking. I am Jesus Christ is a meme game. Is a meme game. Oh, okay. I was confused. Um <gasps> Kerbal Space Program 2 yeah. is not a 2021 no, game. It's they even Long said story that, short, right? Long story short is, I don't know who's currently developing this game because the original developer got in a fight with their publisher and then I think the publisher started the second oh, studio yeah. and started siphoning off developers and like literally tried to coup the original developers. Crazy story. I, I know the game's in development, but who knows where it is and who's actually touching yeah. it. So I, 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 I don't know. Plus, some of the videos they released, like the whole thing about Kerbal Space Program 2 is that you're like, great. First game has a messed up engine. It's great that they're starting fresh. And then they released videos, and it's the exact same jank as in the original game is in Kerbal Space Program <laughs> 2. And it's the type of jank where a spaceship is just wobbling, yeah. you know, like a like a limp noodle. And it's like, I, I, I want to be excited for this game, but I don't know. Yeah, it's a I game I'll be know. excited for when it comes out and the reviews are good, and I know it'll I know it's good. Uh, um, Kino, Bridge of Spirits, which I'm, I actually, oh, from yeah. that one trailer, I was very excited for. That looks good. Big, big Jack and Daxter slash Jack and the Power of Juju Energy, which, like, I miss when we had just those franchise games that were just, like, platform brawlers. Chris, yeah, like, write you... Tack and the Power of Juju down, because we should stream that. Okay. Because I have that somewhere. Cool. Um, Great. Uh, the, first, the first game is whatever, second game I recall being very good. Oh, man. Um, I feel like LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga has been coming out for, like, two years now. You could, What's you the could hold have up? Me, you could have told me this that was the already December out, game. and I would just believe you. Yeah, it was the December game, and then they pushed it. Oh, it's a little like Witch in the game. Woods looks fun. The game is never coming out, though, because it's been in development for like six years. Well, guys, Madden NFL 20. There's going to be a Madden game this year, guys. Woo! Is Magic, is Magic Legends the MMO? That is the Diablo-like MMO, yes. Oh, okay, got it. Um, it's a, a, MMO is a loose term, but it's a, Diab- it's a Diablo-like. It's, yeah, but it's not. There is a Magic the Gathering MMO in the works, though. And this is no, that, these are the same thing. This is full, this is incorrectly called an MMO. Oh, really? I was I was very excited before because I'm a huge Magic the Gathering fan because uh, I thought it was an MMO and then it's it's just a Diablo like. Oh, OK, gotcha. Gotcha. With some MMO, it is more MMO than like, than Diablo is, but it's still it's still a Diablo like like the combat is Diablo. Oh, gotcha. That makes sense. But there's some um, hub world stuff. There's some like adventure like world stuff. But like, yeah, it's it's. New yeah. new generation Marvel's Avengers that no one will play. Mass Effect Legendary yeah. Edition, anyone? No. I like Mass Effect. Uh, I, mean, I might pick it up for like 20 bucks. Yeah. Can I just say, I'm very excited. People say a lot of great things about Mass Effect 2. I have started that game four different times now over the last decade. And that game is not... It has like terrible animation, terrible like voice acting it has terrible ui terrible controls so i look i really just want people to play mass effect legendary edition pick the game up realize they didn't do enough to remaster remake it and go maybe this game is not great two is uh, a good two game. is great uh, you're wrong two two you, you are wrong two is a two is a good game uh one is so dated that it's terrible and yeah, three one's... is not a is not a good game so the problem is that mass effect 2 is the middle of a franchise and it's the only good part of that franchise yeah yeah i i don't want to say it's not a great game but the first impression it makes in that first like 90 minutes like literally i've played that 90 minutes five times over the last decade yeah and it is uh, hey always we, pushed we, me well around. it's like me and the witcher right. 3 I, I played that first six hours about a hundred times and i can't get past it yeah, yeah. every yeah. time i go back it's the just... the justification of hey we re- redid our character creator and now you can have female characters in that in that in being at Mass Effect two is laughably stupid. <laughs> yeah, uh, we blew you up off screen. Yeah, <laughs> like, what? <Excuse> Sorry. <laughs> um, <coughs> uh, new, new, new world? world, the Amazon MMO. Yeah, that'll be interesting. I wonder. Do you I think might... that'll have a, a a prescription? I almost said subscription. I don't know. Maybe I think you know what it might be. It might be a Luna tie-in game. Oh, okay. So if you have your Luna subscription, you get access to it for free. Maybe. I think that game's gonna get canceled. I'm gonna say it right now. I don't think that game's ever coming out. So it was I mean, originally too. like New World, like actual New World, and then people complained and were like, "That's probably not a good idea." 
and then they switch it to more fantastical, right? But it's still kind of racist because it's like it's fantastical, but the natives are still evil. Here's your smallpox uh, blanket. <laughs> it's yeah. it's like dangerously close to that Magic the Gathering expansion that is just vampire col- like colonizers versus uh, dinosaur riding uh, <laughs> native native elves, and everyone's like, yeah. "Man, th- this is a weird idea to have happened twice." Um, but yeah, I, I, Ian, you're right. This game gets canceled, or it comes out and then it immediately gets shelved, just like Crucible and just like that sports game. <laughs> we never got that a- that actually looked good. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. Uh, sorry. Odd World Soulstorm. I don't care about nope. Odd World. I know I thought it looked do, good. I just can't. Stop I've never pushing it. I've never played one, but I thought it looked good. Um, what's next? Proto Corgi. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo X Two. Ratchet uh, and Clank two is not coming out this year. Don't don't kid yourself. Uh, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Um, I thought like that, that feels like it should have a release date by now, right? <laughs> Same with Horizon Forbidden West. Should have been a launch game, honestly. Should yeah. have been a launch. Both those should have been launch games. But uh, launch cycle was bad this time. Um, yeah. Resident Evil Village. I gotta I gotta play seven before Village. Uh, seven's great, so I'm excited for eight. I. Still seven. one of one of the best announce like announcements I've ever seen where everyone was like, is this an RE game? And then they put up village the village, and everyone's like, oh no, it's something called the village. And then they fit out the turn the the V uh yeah, the L, Vil. L, L, or v, the, into three, <laughs> uh into, sorry, into eight, and then fade in Resident Evil, and it goes, Whoa! <laughs> that was yeah. it was a great double bait and switch. Oh, it was too good. Um uh Score? R- Scorn, the super horny uh, HR Geiger game. I'm very excited to play. Or simulator. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Um, Sherlock. Oh, Shadow Shadow Warrior Three. I'm excited for that to be a Game Pass game for me to pick it up and oh, love it. Right. You know. Uh, one super fun fact about Shadow Warrior Two: if you have an RGB keyboard that's hooked up to like the Razer thing and like that, uh, it'll just turn on the letters Wang on your keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect um it's sherlock so holmes good. chapter one if that's by the i think that's it's frog daughter, no? yeah the devil's daughter yeah although looking like crap and animating like crap was actually uh, generally a good game that's and what i've heard from a lot, a like lot of people actually skull and bones skull it is frog bones. give me that television joe let's go i'm so oh uh, we did skip over skate bird which things oh, i out on those things and uh, Shimagami Tensei 5 for me and nobody else. Yeah, that's just you. Skull and Bones is never coming out. I I am so hyped for Skull and Bones to be terrible. I'm going to play it no matter how bad it is, because at this point, I'm just in. Uh, State of Decay 3. Uh, I, thought I hated that, 2. Uh, yeah, 2 I wasn't that into. 3, I mean, I, I, I enjoyed what they do, so 3 could be interesting. Yeah. Um, I'll have to see how that is. Ian's reading something intently. Um, Stray, which is actually a game that was called something else that I followed for a long time, and then their Twitter shut down, and then right before they announced it, they 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 were they announced they were acquired by Microsoft, and then the game was announced. It's that cat exploring like a Kowloon city. Uh, it's like a cyber cat oh, uh, game. Yes, yes, yes. So oh, yes. back when the idea was first formed, it was just a cat exploring a. They were doing a uh, uh, a model a CG model of Kowloon walled city before it was ever torn down. So you are a cat exploring that. And I guess when Microsoft bought them, they kind of like changed ideas and all that stuff. So I'm Wait, genuinely sorry, looking you forward said to Microsoft that bought them, But this is a Sony property. I mean, sorry, I meant Sony the whole time. Okay. Okay. I was confused um, if it was like a deal where they had to finish the game and then give it to Sony or something like that. No, no, no. Yeah. I meant Sony. Um, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we're not for the Switch. System Shock Remastered. We'll be out of early access, apparently. I played System Shock That's 2 soon. this year. It actually has a release date. Temtem, yeah. Uh, I, I thought that actually looked kind of interesting. The Good Life, which is that procedural... No, oh, the, no, the Good Life is by... Um... Swery, right? Swery. Yeah, Swery. Yeah, yeah, Swery 65. <gasps> the Gunk! <laughs> the Gunk. Is that like uh, the Maw 2? It's, uh... It was like some game where you're, like, sucking up goo. It's from, okay. uh... Steam World, like goo based. Steam, Steam World, World. that's what it is. Oh, Steam okay. World guys, but it's 3D. <laughs> They're great devs. They're fantastic. Yeah. Developers. Karen loved. Uh, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. What the fuck is Lord of the Rings Gollum? Sorry. What do you? Losing. It's uh, a game that's gonna be probably not great. It's oh, it's my data. Like, so if it's a if it's gonna be a story game, they make good story games. All right. Why'd sure. you make a game about Gollum? I don't know, dog. <sighs> so stupid. 
Uh, new settlers, I guess. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, those who are Witcher see. Monster Slayer. Is that a novel game? It's an iOS game. Who cares? It's an AR game. It's a Pokemon Go clone. Uh, uh, guys, yeah. Ultimate Fishing Simulator Two. Uh, so I don't think some, Vampire Masquerade fish. Bloodlines Two is ever coming out because of let's the whole... skip ahead to the best game on here, Warhammer Forty Thousand Dark Tide. <gasps> yes, I don't know if you're being sarcastic or not, but I am so hyped for this game. He wants to be I'm big boy hyped. with shooty gun. <laughs> I I really liked uh, Vermintide Two, except that it was a melee game. I was like, I need yeah. more shooting, and this is all shooting, so I'm in. I'm, I'm very. Uh, I I, to I love Warhammer. I think the lore is super cool. I think the games are that I've played that I've played of them are great. Uh, I'm very excited for this game. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Should be great. Um, that's it, folks. That is 2021 in a nutshell. Hopefully. Blood for the Blood Gods, Harkronium. Um, Folks, thanks for tuning in the first episode of Local Chat. Ian and Chris, thank you for joining me for the first episode of Local Chat. Yeah. Uh, we are Games Podcast. We will probably be doing this weekly. So next Thursday, take a look out for this, 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, yeah, this is fun. I like uh, I like just chatting about video games because... Ian and I try to do it very quickly before a stream starts. <laughs> and that's about it. That's <laughs> about our only outlook. Yep. Uh, outlet. Um, yeah, uh, Saturday. Uh, what are we doing, Ian, on Saturday? Saturday, we're going to be playing Fiasco. That's right. We're going back to the cooperative tabletop one-shot role-playing game. It's going to be a lot of fun. Special guest, Jimmy. Oh, He's back. I love Jimmy. I don't know what we're playing yet in terms Jimmy of Carter? Yeah, yeah, that's Jimmy right. Jimmy Carter. Carter. He's bringing bowl peanuts. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> we're going to have a lot of fun. 9 p.m. Full Eastern. Circle. See us there. Um, that's, oh, that's so funny. Ian, I was joking all day that I was going to say Jimmy Carter's coming on the show. And he's just going to just gonna join and go, peanuts! <laughs> <laughs> we we should have had an empty chat box and it just said Jimmy Carter. And we were like, once he gets that, once he gets that, oh, God, I'll set up. He'll be yeah, right he's here, coming. Guys. He's coming, guys. He's coming. Okay, he's joining he's us. trouble with his green screen and he'll be in here. <laughs> he'll be in here. Oh, he's got wow. lots to say about Ultimate Fishing Simulator 2. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> folks until then thank you uh for sticking around and enjoying this uh episode two next week uh if you like this let us know if you didn't like this also let us know because constructive criticism is constructive uh until then i have been will crosby you can find me on twitter at hunt 270 ian gibson you can find him on twitter at think gibson chris elliott you can find him on twitter uh whenever you want to just just believe at subpixel team at the real donald trump <laughs> Uh, until then, <laughs> this has been a show. Goodbye. Bye, everyone.